that with the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I get or worse, yeah. <laughs> okay. First, do we have anybody here from the public that would like to comment to the school committee? Seeing none, we will move on to our school updates from our student representatives, starting with North first, uh, Max. Um, we had our, or our Plymouth North Open House is Thursday, September 29th from 6 to 8 p.m. Parents, parents and guardians are invited to attend, follow their students' schedule, and meet with teachers. Class of 2017 important yearbook news and information. Parents and members of the Class of 2017 should visit the Plymouth North website or view the daily announcements um, for important information that will prevent you from missing any yearbook deadlines. And we're drafting up a brochure right now um, that has like <coughs> class day and graduation rehearsals and all that sort of information in it as well. Club sports and activities. Plymouth North High School encourages all students to be involved through various club sports and activities we offer. Find something that interests you and become a part of the after school community or attend one of our many, many scheduled sporting events and support our athletic teams. Uh, beginning this week, Plymouth North High School will be hosting college visits during all four lunches. These visits are for students to speak with the representative from the college or university in order to learn more about what each has to offer. A full listing of the colleges and universities, as well as armed services, can be found on the website, and it's also on the daily announcements. Um, the Plymouth North and South High School College Fair is going to be Tuesday, October 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. in the Plymouth North High School Gymnasium, where over 150 colleges, universities, and armed service representatives will be there to speak with. The Plymouth North High School Varsity Homecoming Game is Friday, September 30th at 7 p.m. against Duxbury High School. And the homecoming dance is Saturday, October 1st. Tickets are on sale after school in Miss Allen and Mr. Bruno's room for $15 or $12 with two canned goods. Um, SAT and PSAT, Ready Step Testing Day will be on Wednesday, October 19th. Grade 12 will be taking the SATs, grade 10 and 11 will be taking the PSATs, and grade nine will be taking the Ready Step exam. Life Touch Sports Pictures for the fall sports will be taken Friday, September 30th. Student Picture Retakes will be Thursday, November 3rd during K Block. School Breakfast, um, all students are uh, available to this from 7 a.m. to 7.20 a.m. Breakfast can be purchased in the cafeteria or in the gym lobby concession stand. Students who receive free lunch would also receive free breakfast, and that goes for the same for reduced lunch students. Um, the regular cost for the breakfast is $1.50. Balfour Class Rings, the Class Ring Assembly will be held on Tuesday, September 20th during K Block. Parents and students are both invited to attend this event on Monday night, the 26th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the cafeteria. A representative from Balfour will be available to answer any questions and pricing will be at that meeting as well. And finally, senior bio and senior portraits are due Friday, September 30th. There's an informative remind messaging system um, that all the, what is she doing? Oh, and she has a Twitter too this year for updates. And all that information is available on the daily announcements as well. I think that's all. That's all. That was a lot. <laughs> Very it's, good. It's been more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Brianna for South. Or, um, did you want to? I'm sorry. Excuse me one Dr. second. Sorenson. And I, I, you, you said something that I, I might be confused on, and I may have given out wrong advice, so I want to double check that. Okay. I was asked by uh, some parents on this open house night if they could meet with teachers and uh, our representative said they could meet with teachers, and I said they couldn't meet with teachers, that they would have to get an appointment. Now, I don't know which it is now. I, th I think at the high school, it's that you go through the student's schedule. Right. I think, yes. is it middle well, school? You did say, and meet with teachers. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of clarification yeah. On that. Parents, and guardians, parents and guardians are invited to attend, follow their student schedule, and meet with the teachers from 6 to 8 p.m. I, I think it's meet as a group, not okay. individually. That's, that's the point right. I'm trying to clarify. Yeah. 
So if they want to meet on a one-to-one, -one, yeah, they'll they make an appointment they usually still have to schedule. That's a good, uh, that's a good pickup. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, Brianna, go. <laughs> Um, we had a smooth opening on August 30th. There was also a successful opening of the new South Stadium with the North vs. South soccer game last week. The rest of the construction is moving along nicely for our new school. Tomorrow at 12.35 p.m. there will be a club fair for all freshmen. The purpose of this fair is to send students on a scavenger hunt and find clubs to join for the upcoming school year. Math lab, language lab, and all other extra help opportunities have begun during K-Block. Make sure you get a pass from your teacher before attending. On August 24th, both upperclassmen and staff put on a, a successful ice cream social for the incoming class of 2020. Students were able to meet their new teachers, ask questions, and take a tour of the new school. Student council class meetings have begun. Make sure you are attending. The monthly meeting for September was tonight. If you missed it, make sure you see Ms. King. Freshman elections for student council will take place on Friday, September 23rd, and the paperwork is due to Ms. King by Wednesday, September 21st. Open house will take place on October 6th. Parents will receive letters in the mail with their child's schedule as the date approaches. Additionally, we will also be having another clothing drive during this time. Please drop off any unwanted clothes, books, or other household items. Freshman homework club is beginning tomorrow, September 13th. Help will be available for all students from teachers and other upperclassmen. And lastly, progress reports will be posted on September 30th, so make sure you're keeping up your grades. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you very much. So we got, we're off to an active start of the school year. Thank you. And I'm sorry, but I did not hear what you were saying to me there. Okay, it's just as well. Okay. <laughs> For those who don't know this, I have a bad ear. So when she's talking to me in this ear, I'm only hearing blah, 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 blah. So. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, when she's talking to me in this ear, I don't listen to <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Tough crowd. Um, old business. Old business. Um, we can, we didn't update this a few weeks ago. Well, oh my God, a month ago. Mm. Well, that's fast, long, yeah, right? Last meeting. Put it that way. Um, so let's let's take a spin through it and see what we have. Do we, does anybody have any updates to uh, like to jump to an item, or you want to start from the top? And just go. I'm, I will yield to any guidance. Seeing none, let's just start at the top. So incident tracking report. We have ongoing. Actually, the other day it worked very nicely. Yep. Mm -hmm got our updates and again if you needed your password uh resent send me an email i'll send it to you i could actually tell it to you but sorry I, re I remember them <laughs> i can see why okay. is it possible easy. to make it the same as what um, our esb well, is you can go and change it yourself yeah but then i'd have to do something <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sorry really i don't know what, i don't know what the other one <laughs> other password is so i couldn't change it okay um <laughs> School supply list. That um, do we have an update on that? How did that go for I, everybody? I didn't have any complaints at. Well, mm, I didn't really get a lot of a complaints at all. I know that um, the high schools got them up first. Um, it and it didn't seem like there was a whole bunch of chatter on social media like there usually was, and people seemed to be pretty appreciative appreciative of the fact that it went out early. So everybody it, seemed to be pretty happy. How about those of you with kids in younger grades? Yeah, it was yeah, great. We got it was yeah, great. middle school, we got it. And, um, I was not August, at I Staples think. the first day of school for the first time in 10 years. There you go. So, so success. Yep. So we can close that one? It, as long as it's done every year. <laughs> All answers yeah. of success. Well, it's All continuation. Right. Yeah. And, and we will, to that point, um, we will remind our administrators in, in just that timing of release of that information that, so it becomes part of that summer cycle. Right, right. And I mean, the only complaint that I had was that there, I saw a few comments here and there about, well, why, do, you know, with all of their tax dollars and the school budget, why are they even buying them? And I responded with that they don't have to, which is what you had said several times in the meetings, and that it was just recommended. So. Um, but it, it seemed like everybody, everybody was good. 
Good. That's good to hear. So then on the next one, it pertained to the family emergency contacts paperwork. And uh, Ms. Backman had given us an update the last time. And since we went through the, any problems there? I didn't have a problem. I didn't have a problem with it or hear about a problem with it. But I did have people who said they didn't get the link to fill out, or maybe they just didn't check their email, the link to do it until after they'd already filled out the paper paperwork. The so that was the one glitch. Yeah, the email came um, out at Ms. 7 o'clock that night. Yeah. And, and she apologized in the, yeah. in the letter for that. So yeah. that was the only, well, I had just finished filling hiccup. out my paperwork when I saw the email. So, but This was, was opening day? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, was Aspen was down time. opening day, and I think she had bigger worries. Yeah, <laughs> right? exactly. It, it, it was, it was uh, unintended like, uh, to, Facebook yeah, it, it, it shouldn't <laughs> happen that way in the future. But it still was okay because if you had, if it was not your first year, you really just had to verify things. You didn't, I mean, there were other things that you had to fill out that I don't think would have been addressed on Aspen, but really you only had to touch it, that one page, if there were corrections. So that still made it easier than having to write everything in. I thought. I only had to fill out one this year. It was a, a first for me. <laughs> I don't know, I, see, I'm fairly new to it, so I just filled it out. <laughs> I didn't know, could, I didn't okay? know there was is a there, link. I just filled hand, all the paperwork out. It, like your hands, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> set you up with the I, I didn't. I, yeah, that would that would be great. But I, okay. maybe I'm old school. I like having the schools having physical copies of emergency contacts because what if a system crashes? You know, I yeah, like you, I like the paper. Yeah, they, yeah, they need you know? that too. Yeah. They right. do need. They do need that paper, that physical backup for sure. Yep. Very good. Recycling. And we had no update in June. Is this one of the ones that we should really? I would say that this school year we will um, have some more news on uh, uh, recycling for the district. We, there is some progress that's being made behind the scenes and um, we can, when we're ready to bring it to the table for you to have input, we, we, will, we will do that. But at this point, we're still working on a solution to that. Okay, good. So we'll keep that open. Yes. There's progress being made. Um, but again, it's, there's some education that has to go along with it um, across the board. So from, it's a community-wide level of understanding of recycling. And so w we want to get involved in that. It's just a matter of how everyone is <coughs> on the same page. OK. okay. On the next one, the NSBA Advocacy Institute, <coughs> we were going to talk about that at our retreat, but then our retreat, a few things wound up on the cutting room floor on the retreat, unfortunately. So when does, I've lost track of what time in the year does that happen? It's the spring. Yeah. It's is after it a spring? the PTA one, which is in March. I think it's right after, isn't it? No, yeah. it's at, is it after the, um, the national meeting? The joint board meeting? after the, the convention? I, I don't know, but I want to make sure that we stay in front of it this time. Because last year, remember, we ran at a time, and then we couldn't give it much of a discussion. So it was kind of like it's next week. <laughs> you know, like, who's going? It's probably on the NSBA. I'm getting it. Right. It'll happen at some point. Uh, the event will be June 12th to the 14th, oh. 2016. J June 12th? The 14th. Three days this week. Good. Advocacy Institute. Oh, advi this that's the institute, not the conference. Oh, yeah, there's, there's more. Yeah, there's more than one. That's what Google gave me. Sorry. Okay, here, let's see. Wow. So we have. We don't want to forget it, but we have time. Mm -hmm. We don't have to. Advocacy. Uh, thought it was January. <coughs> I'm looking. How about we confirm no, and, we and find out when it is? And then um, I just want to make sure we stay in front of it because we did want to possibly send somebody or participate. Common Core Park informational video. We're talking about that, and we're going to be getting an update yep, and tonight. So we can, that will be forthcoming on once this topic. The department makes its final recommendations. The health curriculum was. Uh, um, Well, we were going to talk about that. Yeah, I, I did. did uh, Dr. Campbell prepared a, a presentation, um, and we reviewed it at the retreat, 
and um, there is a timeline uh, that has been established to take a look at uh, a team coming together and making recommendations to the school committee based on the work that they do this school year. Good. So I have a follow-up question on that? Yes, Dr. Uh, Sorensen. Uh, I thought from our, our when uh, Dr. Campbell's presentation was that we were, maybe that's what you just said, we're going to create a subcommittee, mm -hmm. and that subcommittee is going to do what again? My recommendation in, the, in that presentation was to look at all components of health and health education within the district and look at this. The, the CDC puts out a um, health assessment index that's good for school districts to use, looking at their not only their policies, but their programs and their practices, um, what they do in terms of mental health support, physical health support, physical education. Uh, it's a self-assessment that could be used to come up with short and long-term um, goals. Uh, may I? Mm -hmm. And that is going to be done by your office? Because I thought we had some, some conversation about a sub, some subcommittee. Now, I could be mistaken. Yeah, the recommendation was to have a subcommittee put together to analyze that and bring it forth to the school committee. I believe that's a rep what the report said. Right. And, and who have we discussed who is going to sit on that subcommittee? I think the report had examples of it did yes yeah. so I, but, but we had dialogue at the table not from that we felt it didn't have to be so extensive because it tried to it tried to represent everybody who you know yeah I was I was pretty inclusive and that wasn't a yes, yes <laughs> it was a CDC recommendation that list really came from um, from the guide the guiding document that would be used for okay the so just, just clarify for me we're gonna have information come back to this committee from your office is that, is that, is that, that's the next step that we're going to hear about? Um, and one of the members on that committee that I recommended was to have a school committee member take part in that process, too. But, of course, there would be a, a report that would come back before this board, yes. Okay, it's getting and more complicated as the conversation right. goes. Because we didn't, we didn't want it to get bogged down in minutiae. We, sure. we kind of knew, you knew, you guys, we had concluded that the staff had enough knowledge to really tell us where the gaps were and where we could plug it without getting caught in the minutia of a yet another policy, another committee. And sure, uh, sure. I yeah. Th yes. I that? thought my understanding from that committee was, uh, or that meeting was, that central office was going to go and get, give different kind of ideas to the group, and then the group was going to talk about the ideas presented to them, and then they would present a final one to us right. instead of having them just. We didn't want Go them to just deep get into and one get of too these. Many people. That was know, my understanding. Aimless, whatever pops into your head, kind no, of. No, it wouldn't be that. This, 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 the, the, the process would be very objective, and there are there are there's, there are rubrics to look at, and it's it's really not a. So um, we're all on the same page, it sounds like. It's a pretty straightforward process, and it's not going to allow people to go off and do. Okay. It's, it's a very. It would be a very structured. I mean, we didn't. We by my office. Like those. Anyway. Good. So we're all on the same page. Okay. Right? Thank you. Liz. Good. <laughs> all right, good. The last one was uh, Plymouth South Middle School, fifth grade, Ms. Badger, referring to a conversation she had with a parent recently while at YMCA, suggested that perhaps as a retreat topic, we look at the PS, which obviously we didn't discuss at the retreat. So do we want to discuss that? Do, you want to take time and give, come back with an update or something? Or maybe when we do, why don't we schedule to do um, the middle school's school improvement plan this year? Yeah. When do we yeah, have it's relative to South Middle. Um, it's possible to see if Principal Morgan Weck and his team can put together some level of understanding of what the differences are between a middle school fifth grade environment and the yeah. fifth grade environment in our other buildings to see how what they do to add that level of equity and parity you know or, or maybe that n night um which, sure. which when is it is it how did we know we can get the date on that everybody looks i think that makes sense uh, <laughs> we know nancy's looking <laughs> we it know up she there. knows I, I think that makes sense mr begley that we can we can have them do an update on that okay them, but also I was thinking, because they may not know what's going on at the other schools for the fifth grade, which sure. is the disconnect well, that you're yeah, talking about. That's um, the problem. Yeah. That's what the parents are having. And I also think it they would help should. the parents in general. The 
Yeah, we, we can we can certainly speak to that that night for sure. Yeah, no, yeah. November twenty first. November twenty first. Okay. Okay. It'll be here before you know it. We will. <laughs> So now we have that all updated. Does anybody have new business? No? Okay. Seeing none. Superintendent's report, which is getting very elaborate mm. as the years roll by. Oh, jeez. Well, we'll try to pare that down tonight. <coughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> just want to report on um, a few things that we have going on. I think you're, um, you know, you, you've probably heard about the start of the school year. I think it's gone um, uh, very well. Uh, we're very, very proud of our teachers and support staff that have done a phenomenal job to prepare our buildings. Uh, uh, Patty, uh, Gary, myself, and Do Dr. Campbell, we've gone in and out of buildings since the start of school, and I can tell you uh, what a great start. Uh, buildings are exceptionally clean, um, and teachers must have been, been in quite a bit over the summer because the, the buildings are, are just so well um, prepared for the arrival of school and, and children coming in. So it's been a, a great start. Um, our can, I, can I interrupt yes. you for a second? Because yeah. I just want to clarify it, anybody. Just my comment that I just made that it was getting elaborate was to the checklist that's coming later on oh. our agenda. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I saw a superintendent's too. report, <laughs> and then I thought, huh, <laughs> and I mixed the two together. Keep doing your you your okay, superintendent good, reports good. are right. perfect. <laughs> All right. They're All not right. too elaborate. Too Go ahead. Too much. I, I apologize. Right. I got right. I got three topics ahead of myself. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We want to, we don't want to make the superintendent's report that long. That's for sure. <laughs> I actually went went in to see what I missed after. It's a good thing I clarified that. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that, and I know uh, one of the things that we did differently um, this year was we had a, a separate opening for our support staff, which I think went. Um, a long way towards uh, honoring the, the work that they do in preparation for the school and also the work they do during the school year. And um, it, was, it was good to see uh, a lot of people that had the opportunity to come and share um, that opening. So that was, that was really good. Um, I, I felt it was, uh, it been our goal of trying to, to really bring everybody together at the beginning of the school year. It's really hard and I explain that to, to them that you know, we, we just can't fit everybody in the same space. It, it makes it really difficult. Um, as our uh, South High student, uh, Brianna, cited earlier, um, the track and, and tennis courts and um, the football field, uh, combination soccer, football, all-purpose field um, is in, 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 in great shape. And we had the opportunity to go watch uh, one of the games last week uh, the opening of the track of the of the field and it was very nice uh, what a great evening and when you look off and see the construction in the background it, it's just impressive it's great a, a lot of people um, I know there there were people from town there just to to see and watch and um, it was pretty uh, it was pretty neat to see all that work come together um, so we were happy to see that um, if you hadn't had a chance to <clears throat> order your uh, T-shirt from opening day. Um, if, you, if you didn't do it, send me an email. Um, I did add a central office tab on the drop down. If you go to the email, and there's a link there that you can go and choose central office. If you chose another building and put your name in there, we're, we're all good. We'll, we'll divide it. And I did. If yes. you could just catch that. Thank yep. you. OK. Um, <coughs> and last, last week, <coughs> Ms. Burr just uh, Dr. Campbell, myself, we went to South Middle School, and we had an opportunity to go to the um, kids' voting uh, anniversary celebration. And I tell you, um, Kathy Babini did a fantastic job highlighting the kids' voting um, archive. Uh, she had pictures back there from the beginning of uh, kids' voting. And one of the things that impressed me <coughs> was a article from the Old Colony Memorial, yes, exactly. and I, I would like to read that because I, I think it's very relevant to voting and also to uh, women's rights. Uh, back November 7th, 1896, and this was in the Old Colony Memorial, Principal Gledhill of the Cornish Grammar School, Russell Street, on Election Day, in instructed his pupils in the methods of balloting 
by practical lesson. Each scholar compiled with the usual forms of registration and the ballots arranged from the posted form of the sample ballots of the regular election were made in booths or ensured privacy as if the pupils were actually at the polls. They were then received in due form, juvenile officials counting and making up the return on tally street, the results being given below. The boys and girls were much interested in the proceedings and took more pains than their elders do in marking their ticket. The president, the presidential electors stood as follows, Brian and Sewell seven, Brian and Watson one, McKinley and Hobart 30, Palmer and Buckner zero, for governor George Fred Williams seven and Roger Wolcott 29. For representatives in Congress, Eldridge Jerry Brown had four, uh, William C. Lovering 15, Edward E. Hobart for clerk of courts had 17 and Thomas C. Collins two. The vote for representatives in General Cook st stood 17 for H.P. Bailey and three for Philander Cobb. Thing that's important is that the girls were able to vote back in 1896. Yes, and they didn't get to vote until 1926. So they were well ahead of their time and I, yeah. and I give um, a Principal Gledhill uh, of the uh, Cornish Grammar School, which is, was, was behind the, the, the new town hall. Uh, a great deal of, of credit for allowing students to see the possibility of what, you know, their vote counting for something. Um, and I think the vote was as the election went. That's absolutely right. So the kids tend to be correct on their votes. And Dr. Babini pointed out that in the 20 years of kids voting that the students um, identified the winning president in all but one election. <clears throat> and that was the Which year that one? Al Gore lost. That was Al Gore, yeah, the Al hanging Gore. chad. Yeah, yep. the hanging chad year. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so it's pretty interesting how kids vote is how the elections go. But back in 1896, I thought this was um, a, a really neat feature that Kathy dug up in, in history. Um, deep history here, here in Plymouth. Very nice. Um, so it was very well done. We, it was well attended, um, but that was uh, a neat thing. Unfortunately, the turnout was exceptionally low. Um, I think it was around 8% in, in, in the town. Um, r reminder that we have school committee next Monday. And South at South, South, High School. South High School. Yes, we will be live. Middle. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yes, and we're on the road. And South, South is looking forward to it, all right? And on the road, that's right. And um, just for another reminder, I know uh, Ms. Dargis sent out an email about electronic school board tonight. You will be voting on your devices. So just make sure you stay in sync with the meeting uh, items. And if you lose sync, just hit on the upper left-hand corner, there's a sync tab that will sync you right with the uh, current agenda item. All right. It worked though. Well, it said synced, but it synced me to new business. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're on new business. I haven't moved you. Oh. So you're not synced. Uh, you're synced to my synced computer. To my, synced to, uh, it's not a software. It's an operator. No. <laughs> it's, it's user error. Okay, so you, you should be able to sync now. And that's what I yep. have for tonight. Up from the, the top button. See the blue button? Oh, because you didn't, she didn't join the meeting? I didn't. Did you sign in? It said, it, it said, well. Is that user error on my part? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was me. <laughs> Maybe. A little punchy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's way up here. Yeah, right there. Oh, okay. Way I was down on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Very good. So we're all excited about voting tonight. So. <laughs> retirement announcements. Um, this is Fry. Yes, we have um, two recent retirements. Um, one is Christine Nickerson, a moderate special needs teacher from Plymouth South Middle School, and Margaret A. Warner, a paraeducator from South Elementary School. Thank you, Ms. Badger. On behalf of the Plymouth School Committee, I'd like to thank these two individuals for their combined 53 years of service to the district and wish them a happy retirement. Good. Next one. I don't think we had any correspondence. No. Nope. No. Good. Job description. Uh, event liaison. 
Uh, Mrs. Fry. Yes. Um, so this is my first official job description <laughs> in this new role. Um, and I need to thank a lot of the people who helped with this. Um, this position has grown out of um, the facilities at both North and now South. And a job description hadn't been in place prior to. Um, but what we're calling it is the Outside Athletic Event Liaison. And it's really, you know, to keep an eye on the turf and things like that. And the turf at South is already being booked up as well. And um, with the many changes with the facility use policy, it's kind of a good time because it seems like it's very um, stabilized and things like that and talking to Dr. Campbell. And in this as well, um, it really it makes sure that there will always be a custodial piece for an outside group coming in, a large group. For example, the, the Jaguars were at Plymouth South High School on Sunday. It, there were a lot of people there. Yeah. Um, but also an event supervisor who would arrive a half an hour early. They would participate in a training with the athletic director to learn the facility and the ins and outs of it. Um, they would then orientate the point person for the event with the sound system, the scoreboard, you know, the rules of the turf, the, uh, there's a lot of different things on there, obviously. Um, making sure they know how to, and what that also does is eliminate the need for any press box point person, so it keeps the costs exactly where they're at in the policy that you've all approved, but it also formalizes it with an exact title, and um, we'd be opening it to current employees in the Plymouth Public School System because they'd be people who have pride in the facility and know the facility and things like that. Um, so it would be, this person is, it's been in place at North, but this would be the official job description that would that would go with it. Is, it, is this a stipend kind of um, thing? It's per so it's contract hourly rate. Yep, it's an hourly rate. And it's been going at North, but this is, the key is the outside facilities, because with the growth of the South outside facility now, as well as the, the three at North, essentially. Mm -hmm. So it's the same exact rate as it's been. So. Wouldn't we need more than one? Because you could overlap events and um, things? They, it would depend on the events, honestly. Um, seeing what I've seen at North, you know, just from the outside, it would depend if there was a large outside group on the baseball field and also a, a big soccer event. On the, it could happen that there would. I think it would be case by case. And what happens at both the high schools, with or without the turf, the vice principals, the athletic director, and the head custodian sit down weekly and go over the events for the weekend and things like that and make <coughs> sure all the guidelines are in place. So first, say, custodial overtime, that the overtime list is reviewed and things like that. So, But there'll be one in each high school. One at each high school, yes. yeah. Oh, and there'd okay. probably be more than one individual. It's We would do a job posting once this is approved so that people can apply to be a part of it. It would have to be someone who wants to spend their Sunday with the the Vikings or the Jets, whoever's <laughs> renting the field. But um, there's some really great people, and there's such pride in the facilities by the schools. They'll train them, and they'll have to go through a training to become this person, and that's gone on at North as well. But this is really to formalize it. So it's kind of like a virtual position, meaning, mm -hmm. so today, so this week, um, yep. I need somebody to volunteer for exactly. Sunday. Yep. Next week, it could be somebody else. Exactly. Okay. Yep, absolutely. So it depends on their own dynamic. schedules and things like that. So when out, the key is when outside groups come in, that's when this person comes into play. So for a, the North-South soccer games, it was the athletic directors for this when it's outside group renting the space. But this works in alignment with the facility use policy. Dr. Sorensen. Um, um, the uh, facilities policy that we, uh, we approved yeah. not too long ago does, doesn't use this nomenclature. It refers to yeah. a groundskeeper. And so what, either we're going to have to change the title of this or, or adjust the policy, mm -hmm. because I think uh, they're all, the, the, the functions are overlapping with two different names. Yeah. I think I reviewed that, and it said supervisor role. Um, that was one of the word, the verbiage that we looked at together when we reviewed it. Um, so I think that would be the key to make sure this wording goes in to the policy, because I think it was a, you know, there was turf manager, supervisor. Yeah, I think we used the phrase yeah. turf manager. We wanted to get rid of that went to outside event is because of the tracks, because I think, I know at South, um, our track can host very large state track meets now, um, because it can access the javelin and things like that, that North doesn't have that capability just because of the, the square footage of the space, essentially. Um, so I know we wanted to go with outside and not just turf because of the track and the tennis courts. So because I think they're gonna draw, I joke about the five tennis courts, I think they're gonna draw a lot of pieces. So there might be some wording that we Dr. Sorensen came this may, armed with his policy. Well, this may have to go back to policy because I think yeah. you're making a really good point. But the policy says a groundskeeper will be provided by the school department at an additional cost. 
So I identify for me, please. Yes. <coughs> that would be the custodial role. So, for example, there's groundskeepers and there's custodians who can appeal to work the overtime for the outside okay. event. To follow that up. So yes. my problem with it yep. is there's such an overlapping, the groundskeeper is going to do the exact same thing as the liaison based upon this policy, the way this policy is written. Yeah, I think we'd have to relook at that because essentially the groundskeeper is there for the cleanliness of the facility. When you bring in a, you know, 500 fans there cleaning the facility, making sure it's kept up, whereas the event liaison is the person in charge of the electronics in communicating with the outside group regularly. Um, some of the groups, depending on the bathroom usage, is whether there is a custodial groundsman type person. So this would be the person who is making sure that it's left. We actually developed a checklist that would be checked off at the beginning <coughs> and at the end of the event, and that's new. So they would go through and say, are the lights off? Are the, is the scoreboard shut off? Is the, is the facility locked at the end of the night? Things like that. So, again, again, you know. um, uh, it, you know, your, your policy, your uh, position says, yep. you know, proper footwear, no colored drinks, yep. uh, no sunflower seeds. Yep. Uh, and a gr I, I always thought that's what the groundskeeper's job was to be. Yeah, I, un Maybe I understood I'm it. I thought, yeah, I thought the groundskeeper was cleaning this, up the, cleaning, the sunflower yeah. seeds. Whereas we have groundsmen and custodians who are both in the maintenance right. okay. group, and they Clean apply up. for that. There's almost two people on site. Okay. So, the ground, for example, Sunday I was there, and the groundskeeper was going around. There was a lot of trash and upkeep of the facility. Um, they may or may not work the entire event, depending on what the need is. It, it's very, you bring up virtual, it's very event specific, if that makes sense. And when the Gary and Chris, when you folks worked to help with the, the rates, they said, you know, this piece as well as the, the turf manager event liaison or whatnot. Yep, just to follow up uh, with Dr. Sorensen's comment, um, if Dr. Sorensen's having a little bit of difficulty distinguishing between one and the other, I, I think we probably should make sure that we're clearly defining exactly what mm -hmm. um, a custodial field um, manager, uh, not manager, but um, maintenance person is going to be doing and also what this other person does. A completely different lens, completely di different scope, but I think from the renter's perspective, I think we, they want to know what they're buying and what the difference responsibilities are, and I think we need to clarify that. So maybe that's something we need to, we do, that, do, that. to do. That's exactly where I was going to get to mm. that point. Because yeah. if I come in and I want to I rent the field, mm. Mm -hmm. Who am I paying for? Am I paying for a groundskeeper or this liaison person? Or both. Or, or am I paying for both, both of them? Both. Potentially. Yeah. That's not clear. Yeah. And we have to rewrite the policy, mm -hmm. I would think, to, change to the include verbs. that. Yeah. Update the policy. Yep. Yep. Yeah, update. Yep. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah, uh, so pieces within it, it's almost like the titles were overlapping. You're exactly right. So I think there's a need. These are large events. These are, you know, beyond a North-South soccer game or anything like that. They're large outside groups that are coming in, whether it was when BC baseball rented north and things like that. It's the person who should be the point person for the coaches or whatnot that comes in. So we can, I can work with Dr. Campbell and the policy group and relook at the lingo to make sure it matches because they're two. Dis what's been going on is two distinct roles based on the event. It, it sounds it like no they're two distinct roles yep. and they're both. One is required pretty generally, but when it gets to a larger group, the other one now kicks in. Exactly. And there'll be then right. two fees for that those people. This, the groundskeeper it's, plus yes. Yes. yes, it's within the same fee structure. It's getting, yep. clear, it's getting clear to me as we yep. talk yep. about it. it, it just to, to clarify, I, we, we've had the discussion even with the, the latest group that wanted to rent. They, they look at the fees, they add it up, and they have the, uh, the turf manager, old language, mm -hmm. and the custodian, new, you know, old language to, to look at, well, the custodian's going to make sure that uh, everything's cleaned up when they leave. It's ready when they start. But the the new liaison is is the old turf manager. They have very specific um, needs, and and that's really looking after, um, making sure that there's a connection with the um, with the coaches. Make sure that 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 there's a high level of organization of what happens on those fields. So it, it, they are very specific in their own. And it's almost like a kind of a chaperone supervisor for the event to make sure it's being taken care of. But the, the trick with the groundsman piece was getting a little wordy with the turf manager because we have groundsmen as a maintenance position, but that position could be filled by a custodian, a groundsman, a skills craftsman, you know, anyone who could apply to that through our regular overtime process. So there are two distinct roles. So we can clarify that the language matches, you know, within this. 
So mm -hmm. does that mean that you you want more time to change this or this update part, this? This part, I think, is clear. It's more the lingo in the policy because right. the policy well, was before the... We'd always have to catch yeah. up to whatever exactly. we change. So it's almost like these words would fit in to the spots that I, I've read it about 10 times. So I, I know, I know the, but I know the spots where it could be gray. Yep. Okay, so then does anybody have question, additional questions? Then it's an action item if we want to... Uh, we are having a lot of, the reason we wanted to bring it tonight, a lot of activity at both the schools for rentals. So yeah. we want to follow heard. the appropriate protocol. <laughs> yeah, this has a lot of interest. So. I'll, I'll move the uh, recommendation of administration on this new, on this position. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I thought we were voting oh, yeah, electronically. Yeah, yeah. We're not voting electronically. Oh, we do electronically. Oh, electronically. Oh. I thought you were so excited. Got me. Oh. Got me. Oh. All right. Well, I've already voted. You already voted. <laughs> yeah. The broadcast. Look back and see it. There. Be up at the top. Oh, here I am. Okay, I was just there. I did. I was. I was on there. I don't know. I bad. I don't know. This isn't my one. Sunk. Anybody want to use this? I think her um, account is having issues specifically. When I set up her machine earlier, something was a little bit different, and that may be. She's not getting the button to vote. She's logged in, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's showing she's there. Oh, yeah. I just clicked or something, okay? Uh, what she is saying? Let me see. She's bumping me back out there. That's it what I did before. Bumping you to the home page. Okay. Hmm. So we'll do it the old fashioned way then? We can do that. Yeah, I yes, still know do. how to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course, but at yeah, the retreat, I was able to do it just fine. We have another vote. Yeah, uh, uh, we can try to get the machine up to par sure. and then try to go. Sure. So, uh, Ms. Dargy can. Well, that part of it went faster. It, yeah. it, a lot. But the part of it faster. coming up and voting and seeing who's voted right away. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, so then we had a motion, we got it second, was no further discussion, so once again I'll ask uh, all those in favor? Unanimous. I knew something was going to happen. What's that? You had this intuition. <laughs> no, I an wish answer. I did. Okay. <laughs> now we have... Um, you guys are going to give us some feedback on the school campus speed limits and stop signs? Yes. Um, <clears throat> last school year, we were, were discussing um, uh, stop signs and speed limits on, on school property. And one of the uh, features that was uh, brought to the table was that uh, um, the school was concerned, the school committee is concerned that if somebody was uh, speeding or didn't stop at a stop sign on school property, the police didn't really have recourse to stop them or to even uh, highlight that they were uh, breaking the law. Sure. Well, we've researched it and we found that we needed to do a number of things in order for speed limits and stop signs to be recognized on school property. So the first thing we had to do is uh, work with um, the traffic um, surveyors and, and uh, our uh, engineers here in, in Plymouth to really uh, get recommendations of where stop signs should be. So we've done that work. Uh, we also have to make sure that stop signs are of the accurate size and shape because they are, there's different stop sign sizes and they don't all meet uh, state requirements. So we have to make sure that all our stop signs are a specific size, which that is in motion. Um, so stop sign uh, locations and stop sign size, all of that work is in motion. <clears throat> in addition, in order for um, uh, stop signs, excuse me, speed limit signs to be posted on school property and, and in order for the police to actually um, cite someone for speeding, we have to have posted stop signs on school property. So What's I am... Suggest? 
speeding sign. S speed limit. Okay. Okay. Said stop signs. Yep. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so my recommendation tonight is that the school committee um, give us uh, give the school department uh, direction uh, through the form of a vote to approve um, the posting of stop signs to meet the requirements set forth by uh, the state as far as size and shape as well as the locations recommended by the town engineering department as well as the um, requirement that uh, traffic travel no faster than 15 miles an hour on school property. If the school committee presents that information, you can change that. The recommendation and, and what other schools have had is a 50 mile an hour speed limit. So um, what I would, um, the, the, this is how the process would work. If the school uh, committee does uh, approve a motion to uh, recognize stop sign location, stop sign size, and speed limit uh, location, excuse me, speed limit um, speed, um, then your vote will then be passed along to the Board of Selectmen. Board of Selectmen can choose to approve it. If they approve it, then it can be um, enforced. enforced. Okay, so this is the first step of the process. So um, we we felt the 15 mile an hour speed limit would be something that we could bring to the table. But again, if you choose to make it something different, that would be up up to you. Can it vary, depending on? It could the vary depending on. Uh, you're doing the turn at uh, Plymouth North High School. That back turn. I don't think you're going to take that at 15 miles an hour. It could be five miles an hour. Right. So it <coughs> could vary, right? You can put up multiple speeds. What we can do, Mr. Begley, is uh, we could bring forth a, um, a map of, of, of our campuses so that you could get an idea of where we would change um, a speed limit based on recommendation of, um, uh, you know. Yeah, for me, that, I, I, I leave that up okay. to you guys. I, I don't think we should get, that's minutia, I think, but. I just I want to make sure that we word the motion in such a way that we cover that you don't have to make it 15 miles an hour everywhere that there's some variance you know sure uh, set the appropriate we're gonna a motion to say something like set the appropriate speed limit um, upon recommendation of the police depending department. on the uh, conditions uh, sure. road conditions okay. you guys are gonna do the yes. motion so no I'm not gonna oh, okay you had a question I'm sorry mrs. Burgess <laughs> um, what I was thinking of is Plymouth North and the Senior Center mm -hmm. and that roadway up. Would, mm -hmm. um, how would that affect the Senior Center? As far as the speed limit? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Faster or slower? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I just, I wanted to know, uh, or does it begin when you come to the... It would, for the minute you come onto the campus, there would be a, a speed limit posted. Oh, that posted. would be the campus at yes. the bottom. So yes. It would be and Luke and Obery. Yes. So you'll have to notify them. <laughs> they, they, uh, everyone would be notified. Even keep in mind, <laughs> keep in mind, after the Board of Selectmen approves it, it would have to, it would be posted as a public notice for... Twice. Twice in the newspaper. Yeah. Twice. But we would do some of the correspondence to, mm -hmm. to get it out there. I actually have a, I have a couple of things. Um, the first one is, I, I, and I'm prepared to make a motion when the committee is ready, that I think our motion will be to seek input from the experts who plan stop shines and speed limits. And they'll make a recommendation to us, and then I think we will then m vote again. So I think our first motion ought to be to accept the recommendation when it gets here. Oh, oh no, no, to request a recommendation. Uh, so I'll move that. I'll move that the school committee request a recommendation on stop signs and speed limits on our campuses from the authorities that make those recommendations. I don't know who they are. Right. Didn't you say that was already in motion? That you were already doing that. Stop sign and speed limits. No, what? The stop signs things. have, the stop, stop signs have, are, are done already limits. as far as the location. But we don't no, have no, no, no. I meant the recommendations from the traffic study. I thought you said, you had said you already had that in motion. You asked for three things, stop signs, St speed limits. And then the size, si the placement of the, 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 the placement, placement of, the, yeah. 
You see, what, what I'm trying, with my motion, I'm trying to avoid us discussing whether it should be 15 miles an hour or 10 miles an hour or how many yeah. stop signs. We don't know. The traffic yeah. experts have to tell us that. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's why, yeah, I agree with that. That's why I so said that's my motion. leave it up yeah. to them. Okay. That we, that we seek a recommendation on traffic experts as to where the stop sign should go and where the speed limit sign should go and what the speed limit should be. That's the motion. Seconded by Mrs. Burgess. Any further discussion? Ms. Badger. I just have a question. So then they're going to bring back that, they're not, the, um, sorry, my brain uh, is not firing. We, they're going to bring back the recommendations for the exact speed limits and we're going to approve them when they come back to us. Not just, okay, we have no idea about what it means, how fast I should be going around X, Y, and Z because that isn't my strong suit. None of yeah, That's so, so, but it will come back to us regardless? Yeah. Right. Okay. And Just then checking. when we vote it, we accept that, and that's when it goes on to the Board of Selectmen. But we can't send it now. We don't know what it is. Okay. As I see it. And my second point, although uh, on the motion, my second point is, and I would ask uh, uh, our former high school principal this question, uh, because we've just said kind of publicly that we cannot enforce, at least the police department cannot enforce current stop signs and current speed limits. However, we can st principals can still pull driving privileges yeah. yes. if somebody Good violates. Good point yep. of Absolutely. clarification. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. It's done. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep. So just so I'm clear as part of the discussion, um, so the motion is pertaining we're going to wait we're going to wait for that report to come back to us, mm -hmm. and then we're going to act on it, rather than wording the motion in such a way as to empower them to go off, work with the traffic studies, and put them in place. Uh, to follow up, the reason yeah. why I made the motion the way I did is because the Board of Sel Selectmen need a specific motion, I think, from us, that we want a speed limit of 15 miles an hour, and we want stop signs in the following places. And I don't think we can make that right this evening. Okay. So the specific, because I just want to come back to that point, so I'm cool with that, I'm okay with that. But we keep saying 15 miles an hour, and I just want to make sure that common sense tells you that it's got to be a variable speed limit, yes. yeah. not just one size fits all. Um, we have- So the um, selectmen aren't asking us for 15 miles an hour, they're just, no. we just well, use that as an example. Well, put it this way, we have, um, 12 campuses that we have to prepare this information for. So I think it does make sense to have a listing by school of exactly what is expected um, of, of the motion. Mm -hmm. Because I think Dr. Sorensen does have a point in the sense that I think um, when it goes to the, to the, you know, back to the table, you're gonna wanna know exactly what that variance would be mm -hmm. from campus to campus. So. I think that that gives us enough direction to move forward to make that happen. And to be able to explain to <laughs> them, this is the reason why we're saying the speed limit on this part of the campus is five miles an hour, and over here it's 10 miles an hour. And over, we can explain it to them by using the traffic study. And I think it, it, it's, it would be self-explanatory when they open it, when you open the yeah. packet, you see it, you see the campus, you see the layout, In the 90 this degree is where turn. it's going to be, yeah. yes. Okay. And we can do that. So we, ha we had the motion, we had it seconded, it. We, oh, we have further discussions. Sorry. Sorry. Now, does that mean, that I know, that's here. why I did. Um, so does that mean at the next meeting, so the 19th, we would have that information, uh, or I, is that something that we'd have for the third? It's probably going to line up being a no November meeting. Cause I, oh, November, I, okay. Yeah, so then we're, we're talking January is when this stuff will all kind of roll yeah, out of the high schools. We have to have signs or made. All the schools, um, but, you know. And, and I, I, I would... <laughs> um, no, I just didn't know. There are people that do this for a living. Yeah. So I would feel comfortable running these. You know, they need to drive these, and, yeah. and you know, we, we were just thinking. I didn't know if you, because I thought you said you already had the maps and Well, for stop signs. Input, so. So, so I think. Oh, but they didn't give you the speed limits. The speed limit. limits okay. are another mm -hmm. okay. tricky. Sorry, I was assuming they were all in one big map. Well, the, the other thing that, that forces the issue is we need to give Tom Finnegan uh, requirements for what we want on South Campus. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, th I, I think they would make some level of recommendation. Um, I think they need to hear 
um, the, the concern of the committee tonight about the variability of a, of a speed limit on a campus. Yeah, I mean, I was going to follow that point. I appreciate your turn behind North, but that's straightaway. When you come off Long Pond Road, when that, that's a straightaway. That ought to be really regulated. That's yeah. where the speed's going to take place. Yes. Yeah. You're late for class and you're flying in there straightaway. I think if we do it do it right the yeah. first time, I think we'll have some good success. Chief Pateri had told us in prior meetings that he can enforce the illegal parking. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't need any special vote for that one. So this is just a, a, a variance in the statute or something for, for this specific thing? Yes. Okay. So I just want to make sure we, didn't, we don't need to tack well, it's on just the like, other. Um, yeah, there, there's I'm sure that's covered also. We just want to make sure that, you know, based on the information that we have, um, we want to make sure that we're doing it the right way. And we believe that by going through um, what I described as the process is the right way to get this done. Thank you. Good. Any further discussion? Good now. Comments? All those in favor? You can give it another shot. Oh, got it. I'm fixed. <laughs> All right, here we go. First one in. She was the first one to Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just getting. <laughs> I knew how to do it. It just wasn't there. I'm just getting under discussion. Anybody else Why getting it? Vote? Sink it. I did. You have to vote. Come on, the thing. I had to sink mine twice before it worked. I should do the button so it was going down. My, it's not sinking. Mr. Ginsburg is. All my instructions. Yeah, on Dennis that. is the only one that didn't. It just says under discussion. Yeah. Huh. Can you refresh your page? Yeah, if she voted before. <laughs> Maybe not. How to refresh the site, the website. Yep. There we go. Yay. So Mr. Pegley has voted. And there you go. There it is. Look at Yay. That. Okay. <laughs> it works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now the uh, superintendent checklist which is getting <laughs> exorbitant <laughs> yes it is extensive <laughs> <laughs> Labyrinth. Too complicated. all of those purpose, yeah. T tonight you have um, for your reference um, and this will always be um, for reference for the school committee to take note of all the different reporting features that we have that are required by the Department of Education so if you uh, take a look at the cycle of things that happen on a yearly basis, you can get a good idea of the different reporting timelines that we have um, throughout the year. So it's a good document to have when certain things uh, are brought up re regarding um, when we have specific requirements. So I just wanted you to uh, have this. We do insert it every uh, year about this time. So it's just something that we have. And you can actually go back to a few years ago and see what's changed over time. It's, but it's improved, <coughs> right? Number one is there's a lot more to it, but it, the wording of it is a little more user friendly than it used to be in years <laughs> past. They've tried. It is, yeah, and there used to be a lot of acronyms and everything yes. in years past. And, and Ms. Dargy does uh, doctor a little bit, um, but personalizes it. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I thought that was the one you just you just get it from the state what, on the state website, but you, we make that. She she Perfect. does some they're personalization that, that to it to make it, to make <laughs> it more of a Perfect. <coughs> yeah. Well, it was noticeable today when I was going through it. I, it's much better. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes. It's, it's really important for sure it's it's really important for our administrators to to look at it so they can set their calendars for. Um, I know Patty uh, has yes. a nervous reaction to this list as well. But <laughs> <laughs> and, and the links help. The embedded links help. Yeah. yeah. Contacts yeah. and links. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is. Name uh, on it quite frequently. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. So there you go. You have it now. Thank you. You're welcome. Now we have the uh, next generation <coughs> MCAS update. Like that name? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Impressive. Okay. I'm gonna put it up on the screen. Pardon my I have <coughs> notes here because I can't really see the screen that far away anymore. <laughs> Feel your my contacts are in. First, uh, this relates to when we're talking about old business tonight, and this isn't the, um, the information in its entirety. This is not, um, I want to preface, an update on our park and MCAS performance. Um, currently, um, as you may have seen in the superintendent's checklist, that our <coughs> state results are still under embargo. 
as they're reviewed for discrepancies and whatnot. That will be coming. Parents should be getting that at the end of September. Uh, and then there'll be subsequent reports here to the board regarding how we're faring with both MCAS and PARC as we've done in the last couple of years. Um, so tonight's presentation, <coughs> excuse me, is really to give you an update on the process, why Massachusetts has decided to develop the next generation MCAS. We had, as you know, two years of PARC piloting. Um, we, this board voted to to go forward with um, the park assessments, which I still feel was a really good idea. Um, but this, at the state, as you all know, is, uh, is changing that direction slightly, but I say slightly. Um, I also will, will go over how uh, Mass excuse me, Massachusetts educators and the Department of Education are updating our statewide learning standards, some of the things that were suggested, which were stopped, which was a good thing, um, some of the project timelines of the advisory groups that the Department of Ed has put in place as well as some of the highlights and recommendations of the board um, and then the process for finalizing those recommendations and where you may get some more information fr from the DESC. <coughs> so um, I was just thinking the other day, um, <laughs> a lot of our new educators that are working for us weren't even born before Ed reform. Um, but for those of us who were working before Ed Reform, <laughs> um, you know, back before 93, we didn't have the Massachusetts curriculum frameworks, we didn't have our statewide assessment system, we didn't have the accountability standards. So while it, it can be very overwhelming to us, and I think it's gotten quite extensive in terms of the amount of time and energy that it goes into um, us as, a, as both educators and administrators, there ha have been benefits to ed reform around you know, funding for, for one, but also developing common high learning learning standards. We have the best standards in the country. Our, our students perform the best um, by far um, con continuously. Um, we do have a, a quality student assessment and we use the information um, not just to rate our students, but to look at our curriculum and to, to make improvements within our schools and at the district at the large. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, um, there have been curriculum improvements at the local level, accountability levels at the state level, which helped us with our school improvement plans, um, as well as um, monitoring individual student progress, which has evolved over time as well. I think that that has improved in some cases, not just looking at their performance, but also looking at students' um, um, growth as well. So looking at those students that perhaps are struggling, they continue to struggle, but they're making good growth, and those that are doing quite well that are showing um, equal growth. <coughs> so in, in recent, recently with the, uh, with the adoption of the new standards, um, there was a need to align our assessments with college and career readiness standards. So you may recall from prior presentations, um, the discussions about college and career readiness. This is one thing that wasn't a part of the, the old standards. Our current MCAS is designed to measure readiness from, to graduate from high school, not readiness for college and careers. It's a 10th grade assessment or it's a 9th, 10th grade assessment for, for, for science as well. It's not, a, it's not a college and career assessment. Our standards do reflect that and we do monitor that through our standards, but our current MCAS does not. Um, measure that. <coughs> and as, as, as you all know, because um, we've talked about this um, in the past, we have more than a third of our Massachusetts students that are enrolled in public colleges that are placed in remedial courses. So this is the push for college and career readiness and monitoring that component of our students' readiness, not just ready to graduate from high school, but to be ready for college and careers beyond high school. Oops. So you're all familiar with this. Two years ago, Massachusetts decided to uh, test drive park assessments. We're part of the, consor the um, <coughs> park consortium. There were two consortiums going on. Massachusetts was part of park. Um, so there were some districts that were utilizing MCAS and some that were utilizing the park assessments. And we chose to utilize park and to assess our elementary and middle as well as our high school students um, in that experience and to get some education of what would be forthcoming because we knew that there would be a change. We didn't know exactly what it would be at that time, but we knew that this is the direction that our state was going in. So 
for, for that, I think we made some really good decisions. Um, in addition to that, there were also options for either computer-based or paper-based, and we decided to, um, for grades three to eight, as you know, do computer-based assessment. We've been very fortunate. Um, both years went very smooth, in my opinion. We did not go in that direction with our high school a year ago when we did park because we felt that it wasn't in our best interest to do that at that time. And as you'll see later in um, this presentation, that the state is not focusing on the high school assessments at this time. So back in um, 2000, November 15, the board moved to forward with a Massachusetts-specific assessment. So they, they liked the work of PARC, um, but they felt that it needed to be unique to Massachusetts and not be a part of a consortium. So the uh, direction was to maintain mass control, and a new assessment will be born, hence the next generation MCAS or Ma MCAS 2.0, as some people are referring to it. Um, so this is just a little background of what's taken place this past spring in terms of where s our districts were at across the Commonwealth. 72% of Massachusetts students in grades three to eight took PARC for ELA, English Language Arts and Mathematics. Um, and the English Language Arts and Math tests for grades three to eight included PARC items, which have been scored for diagnostic purposes only. They're not being used for accountability measures. Um, in terms of uh, PARC assessments, computer versus paper-based testing, you'll see that 44% of school districts administered it through a computer-based method, where 39% used paper versions, and then there were 17% of those districts that participated that did a combination of paper and computer-based. So we did 100% uh, computer-based, um, which is the direction that uh, this assessment is going in, so it really, I think, gave us a, an upper hand in terms of having that practice for our students in those because it really is a genre in itself, test taking through a computer. Um, and it gave us that experience both administratively at the local level as well as the student level. <clears throat> this is rather complicated to look at, but this is just a timeline of what's taken place in the last year and a half and what's coming forward. Um, so in 2015, um, in November, the Board of Education voted on this timeline. And in 2016, there were advisory groups that were put to, to work uh, to look at um, the next, gen next generation MCAS, as well as um, re standards review panels to begin for English language arts and mathematics. To see, um, you may recall that there was, a, there was a, um, an attempt to, um, change, to, to get out of Common Core, um, which was successfully vetoed and, and stopped. I think that would have been a disaster for a lot of reasons, um, both um, fiscally as well as um, educationally. I think that was a, um, um, a good move to, to stop that, and we're very fortunate that we had some leaders within our own uh, community that helped to stop that. Um, so some of the things that are happening in, in, in 2016 were the English Language Arts and Math Review Panels that have begun, and as well as advisory work in groups to convene to look at other components of the assessment, how it will be, t how it will be administered, how long the test will be, um, rating scales, um, all, the, all the minutia really that is involved in the next generation MCAS. Um, there are very few vendors that are involved in this type of work. So there was a, a, a RFR that was issued for the next generation MCAS vendors, and that's gone out to, um, and they've looked at two vendors for that. Um, in the spring of 2016, the test was administered. There was a test, um, some districts chose to administer PARC. Some did MCAS, I already went over that. Um, excuse me. And in the summer, um, the contract was awarded for the assessment vendor, so we'll be moving forward with Measured Progress, which was the same vendor that's been used for quite some time now. Um, and then in the summer and in this fall, the test development will work. So this spring, our students in grades three to eight will take the next generation MCAS for ELA and mathematics. Grades four and eight must take it computer-based in all districts. This is something that the state has asked all districts to do. While this may be a challenge for some, we're in really good shape in that regard. <coughs> uh, we have the infrastructure and the technology to do that. They, they um, asked when they were doing PARC and all those numbers earlier said that only 37% said no. They did it with right. paper. Previously. The state had asked 
previously that it all be electronic. Because remember, we were in a mad dash to get all the equipment. Um, but it looks like 37% said no. They did it by paper anyway. Oh, they gave them the choice. They gave them the choice. They, they had the choice, yes. We had the choice. We, we had, had the, choice the choice, too, but they were yeah. strongly... Uh, strongly suggest, yes. They've been eventually. strongly suggesting that from the beginning. and Because and that's where they wanted to end up. That's the direction that, that we will end up um, ultimately. Um, so this, this year, this spring, they are saying that all, you know, that you could put in a waiver request with the state, but they want all fourth and eighth grade students taking it computer-based across the Commonwealth. So that is a change. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and the districts can offer computer-based versions uh, of MCAS um, in the other grades if desired, or they can continue to use paper-based versions if that's um, necessary. So I mentioned, I'm sorry. May yeah. I, before you yeah. move no, slides, good. Yes. Um, in, the, in the spring, in the spring of 17, actually, actually based on your support from the central office, we, you know, and urging us to go to park last year, I feel we're in a really good spot now because now it's being mandated. So we have a year under our belt, yep. and 37 percent of the districts are going to really, really be struggling. I wonder what's going to happen. But having said that, will we get a recommendation from 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 central office about whether we're going to go, you know, three through eight on park, or we're going to take the option of uh, three, five, and seven, perhaps paper? Are we going to get a recommendation from you on that? I would recommend that we stay the course and continue the computer-based testing. To go to move in the other, to move away from that, I don't think would be in our best interest. Our students are becoming familiar. It was really about having our buildings become familiar with the process. That even though it's not park anymore, you, a lot of the features in the in the familiarity with the system is going to be very. I believe will be very consistent. It may look and feel a little bit different, but I believe that when we move forward with the next generation MCAS and it goes live in all districts at all grade levels, computer-based, that it will be very similar to what our students are experiencing. So I think it's a good experience for our students to continue down that route because we've had two years with it. I think they became, I think they were even more comfortable the second time through, and I think that preliminarily, I can say that I think that that's shown, um, that's been good for us, um, and that should only get better through practice. So I mentioned before that there are working groups both for the curriculum standards as well as the um, um, other components of this system. Uh, first for procurement, um, there were bids put out again, American Institute for Research and Measured Progress. Measured Progress will be moving forward. There's also a review panel for K-12 higher educators and ESE staff. Um, we have members within our own administrative team that have been involved in uh, one or more of these uh, working groups at the state level and continue to do that. So we're very fortunate. Yes. We, we also have parents on some of those groups. Yes, too. we do. Yes, that's right. Yep. Yeah. So Plymouth is 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 is, is um, actively involved in this process, which is which is good for us. Taking back the feedback that we've the experiences we've had to make recommendations moving forward. In terms of high school testing, I've mentioned this before. I mentioned this last year, uh, what they refer to as the legacy MCAS or the graduation requirement, the grade 10 requirement. That will continue uh, at least through the class of 2019, our current sophomores. But the recommendation of this, these working groups is to extend that for another year. So we may not see a change for a few years in regards to the competency determination at the high school for their end of high school assessments. It may continue to be that 10th grade assessment and, and what we currently have in place. They are considering possibly moving a, to a grade level college and career ready assessment, which doesn't surprise me given the work that they've done in the past. So that's something that is the recommendation of these working groups and it's not finalized, but this is the direction that it looks like we're going. So can I follow up? Yes, of course. Uh, so <coughs> is, there's, there's discussion at the state level that, that uh, MCAS will not be a re graduation requirement after 2020. There's been discussion. No, like I'm that. sorry. The, the 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 where that where that assessment falls, may, how it what it, how it presents, what's it, what it includes, and what grade level it happens at may change will change most likely. They will that will not go away. There will be a high school graduation requirement. In fact, there's a lot of there's discussions about having a history requirement down the road as well. Um, which 
um, is further out, but th that certainly will not go away. Where it falls, how it how it presents itself, et cetera. Yep. I mentioned the e the English language arts and math standards. Um, also, there's a review panel of over 40 educators, both um, K-12 and higher ed, that are looking at this. There's been a number, hundreds of public comments submitted to the panel. The standards have been viewed. Um, th these standards are are good, but the, they're looking for suggestions for refinements in certain areas. Um, again, I mentioned this before, this was at risk uh, from a post Common Core ballot question, but the Supreme, Ju Supreme Judicial Court ruling removed that question from the ballot. So we will continue forward with the standards that are in place, which is a good thing. And I mentioned uh, a moment ago the history of social science. Uh, again, there's a panel that was selected, expected to convene in January to review the 2003 standards and come up with some recommendations is for that as well. And public comments uh, will be posted online in the fall. Again, accessibility um, with computer-based formats, more accommodations will be available to students. They're constantly looking at that, the paper-based testing and added features for students with disabilities as well as English language learners. These are things that are looking at. These are, again, parts of the working groups, as well as a digital learning advisory council, um, looking at um, partnering for free broadband connectivity, federal E-rate programs to provide technology discounts, um, as well as the MSBA has approved $50 million loan program to support district technology readiness, and that's something that is, is fairly new. Frozen. Okay. Uh, in terms of test administration, the department will phase in computer-based testing, which I mentioned. <coughs> Grade three to eight in English language arts and math will remain untimed um, until spring of 2017. You recall that park, when we did park, that was timed, and that was something that was very new to our students, um, having been involved in MCAS. This administration, this spring, Will, be, will, will go back to being untimed, okay? So it will be very s similar to their experience last year with the exception of the timing piece. So it will re remain untimed in the spring. English language arts tests for grades three to five will be administered in three sessions instead of the traditional two sessions that they're used to with MCAS. Um, and then convening in September is the assessment development committees, a bias and sensitivity committee, and a standard setting policy committee at the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed. So just, oh, jump in the gun. Um, so just as th this is a brief timeline. S since last January, the working recommendation groups, the analysis and recommendations for refinement this summer and fall, public comment regarding all the things that I mentioned before, uh, and, and then the fall and winter of 2016, the final recommendations will, um, go to the Board of Education. And if you're interested in looking at this in greater detail, these are, this is the website from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And any questions, you can also go to um, the email address there, which is provided by the department. Ms. Badger. I just have a quick question about the, um, where, it's, where you were just talking about how they'll be administered in three um, sessions instead English of the two, arts. Yep. is that like this? Is it is it because they're not timed, or or is it or is there Spre more just content? Spreading it out. Okay, so yeah. not there's not an increase. No it's one just wants the same more. amount spread no one's over. Looking for more okay, content. that's what I was. And there's going to be one window. MCAS used to have two windows. There'll be one window okay. as well. That's something I didn't mention. So um, there's a window of time that happens right before April vacation and goes through May that the department is giving for districts, and, the, and you can tailor that the way that you need to based on your district and size. Um, we most likely will s initiate assessments after April break, but we need to look at that. We need to look at a, a couple of scenarios, work with our technology team like we did in the past. Um, but we, you know, we don't want to spread it out over, you know, too long of a time, but we also don't want to overwhelm the students on a daily basis with assessments. It's finding that balance, so we're looking to find that balance. Um, so in terms of um, sort of sum it all up, I feel we're in very good shape, both um, 
as a, as a district in terms of our curriculum, our, our involvement certainly as a community both in the district and as Ms. Hunt said, uh, um, having parents involved at the department level on these working groups is very valuable to us to, to have that input so we have a say and hopefully it's heard and we can make some good recommendations. Um, and our curriculum certainly is, we're prepared, we've been prepared since the standards were adopted for that. We've done a lot of work and we continue to do on, a, on an annual basis uh, every summer. We do a lot of curriculum work. I wanted to mention, we talked about um, in old business, the updates of um, PARC and MCAS and the standards for our families. One thing just uh, to note, um, I had an academic coordinator meeting today with Emily Goonan included and we're gonna do a lot of big social media push this year through the academic departments to really look at how we bring our standards and expectations to life in the classroom and really try to do a year-long um, education on that. So we'll, it will include videos as well as other social media outlets. So more to follow on that as well. So that's all I have. Any questions or comments? Can I pull you back to the uh, timeline? Sure. Uh, yep. Slide the one with the four boxes and the arrow. Yep. Just clarify who's doing what. These are done at the that's are done at the state. So the first one is work group recommendations. The work group there is our work group, right? Department of Education's work group. State. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah, we have. January, which. May. Yes. We have. We have members of our administrative team that are on work groups. There's been there were opportunities to 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 get involved in that, and we right. were fortunate enough to have members involved. The public comment is public comment to State Board of Education, not? Correct. Okay. I just wasn't sure if that was us. We were- That's all state, you know, that's a state timeline. Allowing people to yes. kick it around and- That's have a state line, people can, people can- Our people can do that. Yeah. Yes, anyone in our community could do that um, through yes, the department. Yes, go up to the state level and yeah. be heard. So those two th references that I gave, the, the email as well as that website is where you can find that information. And, and it's updated periodically when there are new announcements regarding public comments and, and whatnot. So there's definitely an opportunity to, to have your voice heard. Good, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Very good. Thank you, that was a good update. And your Right back in the spotlight with fundraising activities. Yeah, new season activities. here. Um, <laughs> you'll, you'll notice that the we have a lot of secondary school fundraisers. And there's no doubt that we'll see a lot of elementary fundraising requests coming in. But certainly the secondary schools with all their clubs and activities and whatnot, um, uh, we get them at the end of the year for the following year. So um, tonight I have uh, everything that has been brought to my attention regarding school district fundraising for this year. Dr. Sorens? Just to note, uh, I think I'm reading this correctly, the ones in red are denied because of the water emergency. Let me there check the caller. There, 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 there were a few that I denied and said if the, if the um, water ban was lifted that we would reconsider that, correct? That's really Regardless true. of where the water was coming from. Okay, yeah, thank that, you. Yes, yes. Well water, doesn't matter. We're not <laughs> conserving water. Rainwater. Oh, Rainwater. Rain. <laughs> Any other questions or Comments concerning the fundraisers. Okay. Short list. Okay. Early. Early. It's early, yeah. Building. <laughs> It'll take off. Yeah. It's manageable right now. <laughs> yeah. Committee member reports. So, any reports and proposals from committee members? That anyone wants to start first, Ms. Madger? Well, I am back to my old ways. So we've got the Alumni Association meeting on the 22nd of this month uh, at 6 o'clock in the Remax in the Benny's parking lot. Is that it? That's it. Okay. I, well, I did enjoy the open and everything like that. I thought it was really well done. Any, anybody yeah, else have any meetings or anything? Yep. I just attended the Capital Improvement Committee meeting this Good. evening. So, um, yeah, the one thing that came up, I think, pertaining to school committee that we might have to address was the um, funding for the fiber and Plymouth South with the um, communications. Um, I forget his name. John had uh, spoken to the board about needing some money when town hall moves and when um, 
our central office goes over to the town hall. So there might be a need for additional funding. So it might come back to school committee at some point. Um, I had to leave a little bit early. Uh, he also left, so I don't think it was going to be addressed or voted on in terms of sense and urgency that this night, but it might come back up at the next meeting. Very good. So I'll when be able to give you a little bit more information. When's the next meeting? I, he said it was prior to the spring town meeting, so oh, they said okay. they speculated January, so I might be able to get some more information um, from them. But it might go back to the selectmen in terms of, because I think it was I think something like $100 million that they needed. Um, 86 would be, have been used through town hall uh, in terms of transferring the fiber lines, um, what was left, what they could salvage, what they didn't have, and what Plymouth South High School was going to need. So that would be a $14 million issue that may come back to school board. So yeah. um, It's not covered under the state money for infrastructure? Well, we, we do have... Improvement. What, what I would that was brought up tonight, where that was really the only school Thank issue you. that was brought up that could present itself to the board down the line. So, again, it was it was just brought up this evening. Uh, Sheila Joyce, our selectman, was there. Um, not a lot of discussion was brought up to it, but it could present itself back to us at some point. So, it's a big one. Thank you. Big one, yeah. So we are uh, we do have fiber running to both South Middle and South High. Um, what I can do is see what we can find out regarding what the requirements are. You know, the only thing I have, I have heard regarding the new town hall was um, the head end for the entire town of Plymouth for fiber optic runs in the old town hall. And if there was going to be any change to ownership of the town hall building, that that would all have to be moved at a significant cost. So there is some level of benefit to keeping the old town hall a public entity mm -hmm. because of very good of, of, of it was yeah, the ju it was the IT manager Joe Young. I took notes, so my apologies, my mind's a little frazzled, but that's what he had presented tonight in the lack of the fiber optics. It's so what in we the can transfer of them from Old Town Hall to new and the need for new. So they are transferring. Well, the, see, the problem is is that the, the new Town Hall does have a significant server capability. And I, I do believe that that will have some level of, of um, management for the town. And it wasn't. I'm, apologies, my notes. It wasn't eighty. It wasn't eighty-six. It wasn't a million. It was a hundred thousand. <laughs> so, yes. No. We're not talking okay. in millions. Apologies. Hard to um, start it. Yeah. Again. Apologies. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I started you got our high. Attention. Uh, no, I should have referenced my notes first. But I. Uh, apologies for that. Yeah. I just looked at my notes and I'm thinking to myself, okay, that was way too much money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the strategy. Would be that. There's a need for it though, a, from what I understand. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> it's the Corning, I think you said the Corning single strand and um, from what I understand they're back ordered right now. So um, okay. again, I just, I was just writing down as he spoke because as soon as he said it could influence Plymouth South, I immediately thought to myself, well, this is something that the school committee should probably know of. So Yes, we're dealing in thousands, not millions. <laughs> we we can uh, I can circle back with Joe. Um, I I do believe the project um, will accommodate uh, the tie-in from the old fiber to the new. But I will definitely check with Tom Finnegan to find out where that falls within the project scope. In regard to new town hall, old town hall, I do know that there is a transfer of server um, configuration. But again, I think Alan McLean, our, our network engineer, along with Joe, needs to collaborate. And what I'll do is understand that at a, at a technical level and bring it back to the table so you have an idea of what we're talking at cost, potential cost, and also figure out what's happening at South. Because if Joe's concerned that there's a funding mechanism there that he needs to look into we want to find out what that is so I can find that out and okay. if it's going to go in front of capital we want to know if the committee needs to well, support Well it was this. a sense of support urgency this. too on where to vote yeah. in line because there were a few yeah. other things that were pertinent that came up within the town so yeah. but I think if we can sort of be, stay ahead of it and if I can Agreed. report any communication from you or what I need to do just let me know. Perfect. And I'll be happy yeah, to we, do so. The other thing was was the parking um, with the new town hall and the old town hall for central office when it relocates, the parking may not be ready with the new town hall. 
Um, so there were some things that also may have influenced the, um, the school. Um, so again, I'll, I just was sort of listening tonight and kind of taking it all in, but as, as we move along, it sounded as if there may be some sort of delay in the parking infrastructure um, going in Did when new that. town hall is built. So, um, Think about busing, <laughs> busing employees to the new town there's hall. A, there's some parking structures they that are school being school built on South Russell way. as proposed. Um, it, it just sounded like it, it may not be ready in time for when this town hall opens. So, and how that's going to impact Different topic. the schools is important. So, again, I'll stay on it. Perfect. That's uh, some of the things that were brought up at the meeting this evening. Perfect. That's pertaining perfect. to schools. Perfect. That's exactly the kind of feedback we need. Okay, good. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Yes, I apologize about the millions. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Well, yeah, it doesn't sound so will have a parking yeah. lot yeah. available. <laughs> Dr. Sorensen. Yeah, actually, I don't have a report or a proposal, but I do have a question. Having not been on the committee when uh, North closed down, the spring that North closed down and then opened up across the, the way, uh, and now we're doing it with a vocational school, and I know that some of the equipment, at least there's been some discussion about some of the vocational equipment okay. will be removed mm. from South over to South. Yes. Sometime this spring, and I'm wondering if we're going to get a report from central office about exactly how education is going to continue as that as that equipment gets pulled out. Yes, um, very good point, Dr. Sorensen. Um, we are working on a significant moving plan to be able to meet the construction timeline of Plymouth South, the new South, because what happens is um, we're going to have to to take some equipment out because the contractor is going to need it in order to meet the timeline. So um, Principal Funashari is, is working on that with Tom Finnegan. Patty's still involved with that. Uh, Chris Campbell's involved with that. So, uh, and Mr. Costin. So we have a team that, that we're working on how we can phase all these things in because the teachers need to know what they're going to be, uh, ha what they're going to have access to. And when. And, and when. So that is something that we have been working on um, for a few months and we can bring that information to the committee. Appreciate that. So you have an idea of when all this is going to take shape. Okay. Ms. Um, I have a couple of uh, things. First, I just sent everybody an email with an invitation. The Massachusetts PTA is having a, a very big um, health summit. Uh, and that's October 21st. It's in Gardner, uh, but it is on a Friday. And they're looking. They're looking, I guess, a lot more professionals. There, there are going to be PTA leaders and parents there as well, but they're also going to have a lot of um, health educators, teachers. Um, there's some big names for keynote speakers, some legislators. So um, I wanted to, I promised them I would, I would invite everybody. So I just sent you all the invitation. Um, so you should have that. And then the other thing is, um, we haven't had a meeting since our Japan visit. Um, was here, and we have a, a video queued up to show that oh. one of the parents made um, and put, um, she actually shared it on Facebook, so we got a copy of it to show everybody. It just kind of highlights, it was from one of the chaperones, and her daughter was also was here. Snow. Yep, and it's, it's uh, we have it, we brought it to show tonight, um, and it was, you know, I think we didn't have a whole lot of glitches. Everybody seemed pretty happy with the week, so. This is just a quick video just to show some highlights. There's some of Dr. Sorensen's party. <laughs> they were up in the bucket truck. Yeah, can we? Hey, hey, hey. There you go. Yeah, that was a great night. Yeah, oh, my goodness. That yeah, that's that cute. Yeah. This, we think they snuck into the gym this day, but <laughs> this wasn't, in a, wasn't a, a scheduled event. No. <laughs> <laughs> He? He's one of the host families. <laughs> but uh, they made this and sent it out. It's raining, yeah. No. We got to go on the field at the Paw Sox game. That was fun. Before the thunderstorm. From their trip to Boston, they spent the last two days in Boston.
We had lots of tears the day that they left, which is always a good sign that everyone had a great time. So, but that's it. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. Very good. <laughs> Anybody else? I just wanted to reiterate we've congratulated all of you, all the staff. The opening day was fantastic as always. The new field, um, being there that night, the first first play, game played on the field. That was exciting and I liked, I was up in the stands and a lot of people didn't recognize me, don't, don't know who I am and um, I can overhear the conversations and everybody that I heard anyway uh, were number one really excited about the field but also excited about seeing that building coming together off in the distance and that was good to hear. It was good to hear the positive community feedback. And then today, just so all of you know, uh, uh, Dr. Maestas and Mr. Costin and I, we were at town hall for the one of the initial budget, uh, fiscal year 18, if you can believe that. Um, starting to talk about fiscal year 18. Um, so we had our initial discussion and talking about a few things there. And um, it's, just, it's just to let you all know that um, they do, especially Melissa does a very good job of reaching out to us and making sure that we have a, a place at the table while the decisions, you know, of what's, what we're gonna go for as far as goals and stuff are set. And uh, if you guys wanna add something more to that, I think that's vague enough to just know that <laughs> we're talking. Our work, uh, our work will begin. <laughs> very good. And it was a long meeting too. I uh, yeah, I missed my. Uh, wound up taking off typical my typical. Meeting. I was just going to take off the morning. I wound up taking off the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Uh, good meeting. Good meeting. It just was a very good meeting. Next item is um, the uh, Plymouth Youth Development Collaborative. We have a schedule of the meeting times and everything um, that are coming up. There's no minutes or anything there because obviously they're starting again. This, yep. this, this, Friday. this Friday. This Friday there's a meeting. Yeah, this so. Friday. And I won't be sh in town, so. Right. I can yes, she tagged me to be there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then uh, the building committee, yes. Mrs. Burgess. And, um, and you gave me my packet. Well, there's a lot going on. Speaking of what... Uh, Lee was talking about is about parking structures, <laughs> and um, what they've done is they uh, they were able to uh, change it so that uh, the uh, architect of the uh, project is the, going to be the architect uh, that, that uh, puts together the garage, and um, they have worked up uh, a plan, and uh, right now uh, before. In that parking lot beside the um, burial hill, there were 61 parking places. Uh, now, uh, they're going to do a two-tier thing, but don't, no elevators or anything. They're not going to be connected. When you go down the hill, you'll just go on. The, they're, they're talking about employee parking on the top level, and um, there will be uh, 75 parking places there. And, uh, and when you go down the street a little further, there'll be public parking underneath, and there'll be 77 more parking places. So it's really increased by 91. Wow. And uh, I don't know whether that's going to be ready or not, but I th they haven't said that it wasn't, the architect. Mm -hmm. When we were just at the meeting Thursday, they did not say that it wasn't going to be. So we'll have to go from, from there. Uh, the other thing is that there are going to be 34 free spaces on the street, and there's going to be 44 spaces, and it said the other two lots, so the up above lot, and it must be where the old police station was too that they're talking about. So there'll be 44 more. So it seems like those would be ready at least anyway for the uh, for the town hall parking. Um, if not, we can offer them um, their bus from federal from the. Um, new, Present oh, administration no. building. <laughs> there are a lot of places that. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, if we want to be in there. That's, that's an idea. Okay, and just a thought. Anyway, uh, uh, so about the new town hall, still, they, they came in with, um, they have the colors and the carpets and all the things. And, and the important thing is the um, old courthouse. 
and how that's going to be. And they were able to get a sample of what the carpet was like. And they 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 have a company that is putting out the design for it's for the floor. It's red. It's a it's sort of a red carpet with design. It'll look nice with the wood. Uh, things are coming along really well there. Um, they're uh, about the stairs. There is uh, installing those original uh, stairs, the marble with the the iron stairs in the atrium in between the, the new old and new town hall. And they said that there's going to be we're going to have a future tour after the steps are installed. So that'll be in, they're going to they're it's planned to be November that the steps will be installed. Um, the uh, Sims House uh, they do have a contract a northern contract. Uh, con construction was the highest bidder and uh, they've checked all the references and they're uh, really great references so they were very pleased and uh, they're going to begin fencing that off at the end of September for the construction. Um, Plymouth South High School. Well there's a lot of discussion about how it looks. You know before when you went in you you've got this great view going up to the middle school, you know, when you looked over to the right, it was like, wow. But now, when you're up on, at the middle school, you realize it's a campus, mm -hmm. and that, and the building, it just looks so big and important. It's great. It really is great. When the other one comes down, you'll be able to see it from the front, but right now, right now that's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> but, uh, so, there was, uh, they had a couple of little issues on site with the contract that have tied to tie it uh, into a live sewer line. <laughs> so, but anyway, it's been fixed and all is well. They're having a, they're having, doing some due diligence uh, for the fire pump uh, to see whether they can re, you know, re refurbish the pump that they have. And um, they were talking about sound systems um, for the football field turf and turf and uh, they might have, might, they're talking about maybe going to a Springtown meeting. Do you have anything to add? Distracted me. Oh, <laughs> he distracted you. I thought you had something to add about the fields oh, and the yeah. turf and the, oh. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> but I do have something to add that Patty had said, and they're talking about um, in the school, and maybe I'll let you finish when I say it. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's uh, planning for art, and that the, the, um, there's going to be hangings. I think you should explain <laughs> the hangings on the stairs better than I can Absolutely. for different pieces through the years. Yep. Yeah. Um, I was sad I had to leave the um, North South soccer game before the boys game to go to building committee, but <laughs> I was happy we did win, I had to say. I was still a little biased. But um, what the, with the North project, um, the beautiful architectural piece that's in the Jim Foyer in, that has remnants from the building that an architect of the building committee, I obviously wasn't involved in it, but I've heard a lot about, um, was something that North you know, put together. And with South, um, we're very similar, but we're different too. And I don't do a great job describing this. My art staff does, my former art staff. Um, Colleen Quinn and Kathy White, who's actually at two of the elementary schools now, and Mike Capel, are working together to design a piece of artwork that is going to hang in the new building. Um, I didn't bring the visuals this evening, but um, it's, all different it's really neat to capture the, the decades of the years of kids that have gone through the school in different colors. And again, she explains this better, but kind of a school that didn't have a lot of light, now a school with all this light, and it's something that's transparent that will will hang. And I, I joked that Tom Finnegan, who is phenomenal, there's Tom time, which is immediate <laughs> in his world. And we have kind of been tasked that to have it completed by February so that the architects can hang it appropriately. And we went up to the building last week and looked at the measurements and what the weight would be and things like that. But it really is looking to have kind of a, a prism isn't the right word, but effect that the red would be the 80s, um, blue would be the 90s, things like that, and you would see it. And in that monumental staircase, that is really the architect's big piece. Mm -hmm. um, there's another structure that looking at that doesn't have to be hung um, to put. And the art at Plymouth South, I, to me, in my years there, that was kind of the changing moment of the culture of the school when we, that there's art everywhere. And um, they're looking to put a structure together that brings in um, potentially a, a, a beam from the current building. Um, wood has a representation for the community and even the ocean through something that the electrical students could have going through this structure. You have to see it. I'm not explaining it well. They're much more talented, which is 
a great leader delegates to great people. So, um, but we had, it was exciting. And David Peck has been involved with us all along and talking it through. So we're excited about it. So I shared that at the meeting, but yeah. um, it was great. But I was sad to leave the games at the end. <laughs> it was great, but it was so, and thank you all. It was, it was a great So you're night. still involved with that? I am still involved. Yes, yep. okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Very. And then they were talking about um, tours for the school committee and building committee together too. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know about when? I don't know when the dates are. They um, didn't make a date. Late. They didn't make a date yet, but we'll yeah. work with okay. Tom. The kids are actually going up there, the Panther TV kids Wednesday, to interview Tom and to go around during the day. So, to get some more footage. Um, oh, wait. On the, uh, to that? What? Yeah. Um, Mr. Morgan I thought has a our meeting on the um, 19th, are we getting a tour of the South at that time? Not that I'm aware of. We, I thought we oh, were. Well, we You're getting a tour of the, <laughs> of the old building. Silos. I don't know if it'll be the new building. Not the new building. Because it's next week. Right. No, it's not ready. Not, I'm not, not it's seven I know o'clock that. at night. Yeah. Seven o'clock at night might be tough because okay. I know the... No, I just was my understanding because I missed the one on Father's Day week and I said, oh, don't worry, there's going to be another one yeah. at the meeting in September. So I was under the assumption we were having one. No, I nope. Didn't. Okay. If I if I it gave you that on impression, where I'm sorry. Are at, you know? mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't. Okay. I, yeah. They have not given a date. They just said that they were, they're trying to plan a tour for the school committee yep. and building okay. committee together. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it's. Yeah, that'd be kind of tough with visit. the. No. With the. Yeah, you wouldn't night, see as much with the dark yeah. night. It's, it's it would be an insurance time. risk to have everybody walking yeah, around the construction site. Construction site. Let's see. On the salt, they have the salt shed thing, and they're getting a, a, a plan, and they've got Weston and Samson working on it. The North Plymouth Fire Station, Article 5 for town meeting, is coming in for 350 uh, to buy 15 Hedge Road. Um, and uh, our next meeting, uh, JB will be coming from the Public Works, you know, right. DW. And he'll be at that meeting. And um, I when guess is that, when is that meeting? Hmm? The next meeting, when is it? The next meeting is October 13. Thank you. And uh, oh, and then they talked about the unveiling of the um, weather vane at the uh, yeah. at Pilgrim yeah. Hall. Uh, I don't know if any of you went to it, but it, did. it did come out. You did go. I yeah. went. Yeah. It was great. Did anybody else go? Yeah. It, it was wonderful. I have it on my yeah. cell phone if you want to see it before you leave because it, it's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, they, I talked to the man who, who was doing all the planning and, and historical, uh, inf getting all the historical information. Yeah, he was there, and I got a picture of him with it. And uh, it's, it's really going to be fantastic because they couldn't show us the whole thing. We can only see the eagle and, uh, yeah. the, and the arrow because awesome. it's so tall it would have gone through the top of Pilgrim Hall. It, it would have been a weather vane on Pilgrim Hall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it, but it was, it was very nice to see. Excellent. So. It was interesting, just to add to that, it yeah. was interesting that at first they thought it was custom built. Uh, you know, when it, when the building was built, they thought they had it custom built. It turned out it was ordered from a catalog. Oh, really? And <laughs> they found the original catalog. They had the uh, page blown yeah, up and everything with the, up. I got all, that on all the details oh, yeah. of it. Yeah. Workmanship back in the day it was, was like a, you know, like beautiful. a Sears kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they order. Had the picture, <laughs> Makes they had sense. the picture of the whole yeah, thing there, so you knew what what it's going to look like. Oh, and it's going to go up either Tuesday or Wednesday, they said, this week. This week? It was only shown for Saturday night and Sunday. Right. Wow. And now they're, they're planning to put it up on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, with well, the coppers up. Yeah, so I was mm -hmm. I was trying to get, I told I asked them if they could email so that I could go down and see or okay, let other building committee people, and you know, know. And they when they could go. It's it. cool to see that go up. Let's see one. So anyway. Cool. That's, That's the end of my report. How about that? That was a good one. Okay. <laughs> that was long enough. <laughs> I didn't even get into all the things that they've been doing at the town hall, but that's okay. That's, that's I good. I gave it to you anyway. Thank you. And pictures of what they've been doing. I already looked at them. Thank <laughs> you. They're good, too. Personnel reports, Mrs. Fry. Yes. Um, We've been very busy <laughs> since the last time we met with appointments. Um, we've had 51 certificated appointments, um, two coach um, appointments, 20 classified appointments. Um, we have two leaves of absences and nine resignations. So it's been a really busy 
month or so That's in the great. HR office, and I do feel old meeting a lot of the wonderful, excited new staff, but they're, they're a tremendous, tremendous group, so they're very excited, and I got to spend a few days with the new teachers um, in August, so that was exciting as well. So. It's been busy. Exciting. We're still going. So. <laughs> very exciting time. Very good. And now we have the accounts payable warrants. We have three of them to cover. Yep. Ms. Bed. Where school committee members have been provided with a copy of the cost center transfer and transaction summary report and warrant for review. I move that the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the reports and accounts payable warrant S08-1816 dated August 18, 2016 in the amount of $657,625.59. I heard you. Didn't you hear that? I have a motion. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I have a motion and seconded by Dr. Sorensen. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Or should we vote on here? Are we here? voting on here? Oh, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, ready for you to. Voting. I, I can't. Old Harbit. Old Harbit. I won't be able to vote online right now, so. Everybody did but Dennis. Just happened. Know. Just hold on. I'm oh, getting there. Oh, he can do it. All right. So, yeah, but, you, but you're voting in the positive. Connectivity to the to that, to that part of the program. Yeah, so I, it's funny how it moves. I had, I had a refresh. I I Try the refresh yeah. button. Try I just, the same thing just happened to Where me. The, where's the refresh button? I got it. I got it. I think oh, it's coming. Got it. <laughs> no, I don't have it. <laughs> okay. Just do it. Oh. I don't have it right now. So we have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? And it's all unanimous. So we have a few little bugs to work out, but it is moving faster. Yeah. Appears to be. Right. Next one. Now that one. That one we just did, we had we signed that one already. So it's the next two that are in the book here tonight. Okay. okay. Where next. Is, where school committee members have been provided with a copy of the cost center track tricks. See, and I talk slower. It's more difficult <laughs> for me. Sorry. Transfer and transaction summary report and warrant for review. I move the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the reports and accounts payable warrant S090116 dated September 1st. 2016 in the amount of $455,781.28 as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? second? Mr. Morgan seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Oh, darn. Now my thing popped up. Now. Oh. Uh, so we're just going to keep moving or can. <laughs> mess that up. <laughs> All right, the third one's the charm. So we'll do it on the third one. Yes, okay. Whereas school committee members have been provided with a copy of the cost center transfer and transaction summary report and warrant the warrants for review, I move that the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the reports and accounts payable warrant S09-1516 dated September 15th. Mm, September 15th, 2016, in the amount of $892,641.01 as presented. Uh, mine's not coming up. Is everybody else's coming yeah, up? Mine, oh, I don't mine's have it. not. Okay, so we're going to do it. <laughs> so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second it. Well, any further discussion? All those in favor? Oh, now it came up. Oh, there we go. Oh, there it is. <laughs> just oh, it just <laughs> well, it doesn't come up until there's a second. After the second, <laughs> After the second. then it'll show up. Ah. Oh. So should we vote it, now? It has to be second. Oh, this is the this middle one that came up. That's that was an important piece of information. <laughs> <laughs> until until we get the second, then it's a call for the vote. After gotcha. the second is made, then the call so for the vote. So I just need to slow up. it down a little there. Okay. It'll pop up once it's ready. <laughs> Once, it's ready. Once, you call for the vote. Once I call for the vote, it'll pop. When it's ready. Okay. But, it, but it, we can't call for the vote until the second is made. Okay. So now the homeschooling plan approval. Yes, tonight we have um, plans that are ready for your review. Um, they have met all the requirements uh, by Dr. Halpin's office, and the recommendation is from uh, central offices that school committee approve these plans. Do I have a, yes, Ms. Badger. <laughs> I move that we approve the plans as presented. Do I have a second? Ms. Hunt seconds it. 
Ms. Hunt second it. <laughs> now, everybody click your button. <laughs> If it's, oh, that was we'll see if it popped okay, up. Just Ooh. do it, Jim. No, I can't vote. I got to log out and log back in. Oh. So do I have to take the vote for orally? All right. We have a motion. We have a second. No further discussion. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Is there just one to sign? Do they need to sign? I thought there were two. Two. Yes, I only see one. There's, uh, should be two in there. Right? There's only one in here. Then we sign the one. Mr. Costin? Costin. Should there be two to sign? One. The, the, Just previous, one. the previous two were already signed. Uh, we okay. signed on. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just sign in the yeah, attachments, I saw our signatures on the first one. I missed it on the second one. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. You, you, had, you had a photocopy of our signatures. Okay. That's such a boy. Okay, July 11th minutes. Yes. Okay, I'll move, I'll move. <laughs> no, go. <laughs> I'll move that we accept the uh, minutes of uh, July 11, 2016, as presented. Moved, seconded by Ms. Badger. Any further discussion? Please select the way you want to vote. And now we're just going through the motions at this point because we know we still have to do the manual vote. Yeah. So we got a motion, we got a second, we have no further discussion. All those in favor? Uh, you abstained, you weren't there. One abstention. One abstention is Hunt. I don't know what I want to do. All right. Thank you, yeah. Obsolete equipment. Yes, tonight we have a number of uh, desks that have been uh, inserted into the agenda for disposal. These are desks from PCIS that are, in um, some cases, there's uh, desks, there's 50 student desks that um, are from the Apollo House and another 150 armchair desks um, that are um, going to be either in this case, um, discarded because they are beyond repair. And there are some desks that we are proposing that we are going to look at selling. Um, there will be a few desks that uh, Mr. Cossum will put out for um, uh, notice to school districts that are in need of desks that we would look at selling. Um, the only reason why we're proposing this is because uh, we are going to have some additional desks from Plymouth South High School and we believe if we don't um, discard uh, some student desks that are in disrepair and also look at an opportunity to sell some of these desks, we will have an oversupply of desks and no place to store them. So we believe it's in the best interest that we look at um, addressing these desks at this point. Very good, any further questions for anybody? Then do I have a motion? I'll move that we... Um Approve the obsolete equipment from uh, PCIS. That's recommended. That's recommended. Okay. And a second. Mr. Selly seconds it. Uh, it was seconded. I, I was waiting for a. Um, Any further discussion? No. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. <laughs> you got to have some so. fun, or it's just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you voted. Hey, he's, he's, he's in. in. All right. Now it's just Michelle. There we Whoa. go. We got it. Yeah. Michelle, Ooh. yay. Hey. Boy. I didn't think we were voting. Success right? small. It yeah. comes in small packages. Oh, we know it. Okay. Uh, that, you know what? One thing before we break, um, I just had. Maybe you wanted to give us a little something on the pre-K and the full-day kindergarten. Yeah. You know, I should have actually included that in my opening remarks uh, or the superintendent's Just report. popped in my head. But I, um, the full-day K program is in full steam. Um, the projections that we had uh, regarding uh, population of class sizes are were on target. Uh, we did it. Um, have to look at an, an additional section over at 
uh, federal furnace, but we were able to make those accommodations. But I tell you, the numbers are on target and um, things are, are moving along nicely. We're, we're very satisfied with um, the uh, layout and the, and the predict, uh, predictability of, of students in those, in those classes. So uh, Dr. Campbell's uh, initial run-up numbers that we were looking at uh, for potential students, it, it, it did work out very well. Uh, with that said, um, the uh, preschool program uh, consolidation of, of moving into this building is, is working out um, very, very well. And um, if you have an opportunity and, and you know, to <coughs> communicate with Mrs. Mello, I think a lot of you have talked with her over the years. She is very happy with the, the way the program has come together. And it's, I would say, the best it's ever been as far as uh, putting services together, having everyone in the same place. And the parents seem to be very satisfied with um, where they are, um, the way the program has come together. It's, it's two, I, I believe, two successes that we've, we've had with pre-planning, planning, and implementation. Very good. Very good. Yes, Ms. Hunt. Can you just, um, I don't know if you have that information, what is the, I, one person did ask me about what is the class size recommendation for the full day kindergarten and if, if we're close to that, if there's a concern if more students come into the district? Yeah, the, the numbers that we have and we've tried to keep true to it, the, the highest numbers that we're seeing in the district are 23. Okay. That's the highest. We did have a concern of um, numbers getting higher than that. Uh, and we did uh, make some adjustments to be able to, 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 to fix that. We were going to have some numbers in the 26, 27 num uh, range at Federal Furnace, and, and we were able to, to, to take care of that and, and add another section. So uh, the numbers, the highest numbers we have in the district are 23. Okay. Well, and keep in mind that we do now have a, a, full, uh, a para uh, assigned to the full day K program. So, I for think each the class has a para. Yes. So I, I think we're in good shape. Okay. They, they, they seem to be very um, consistent across the district. And we've really looked at the numbers to make sure that there is equity Absolutely. and there is parity because now we have the, yeah. the, the para. Right. <coughs> awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you for that Welcome. update. And then um, without objection. We're adjourned early. The first meeting, we're a little bit early. Just pretty yep. good. 9.02.